Worship for Sunday, October the 11th, 2020, Day of Thanksgiving. At harvest time, we join the psalmist in offering thanksgiving to God. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. We are grateful for the abundance of the good things of God's creation. Paul reminds us that our thanksgiving overflows into generosity. As the body of Christ in the world, we give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for recording a prelude and postlude for us today. Your music is always a beautiful and important part of worship at St. Paul's, and we appreciate your gift to us this day. If you need assistance, please call me at the church office, leave a message if I'm not in, and I'll arrange for help. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Children's time, the magic words. I'm so very glad you're here because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Who knows what the magic words are? I don't mean something like abracadabra. I mean, please and thank you. When I was about your age, these magic words had to be uttered before any request would be granted. Mom, may I have a cookie? I'd ask. And my mom would say, what's the magic word? And then I'd say, may I please have a cookie? Only then would I get what I wanted. Then when I was eating the cookie, my mom would gently say, I beg your pardon? And then I would remember to add the other magic word, thank you. The magic words please and thank you. Giving thanks has always been important. In today's first Bible reading, Moses tells his people not to forget the magic word, thank you. In today's second Bible reading, we'll hear that the generosity of God's people will cause others to be thankful toward God. They'll say the magic word, thank you, not to us, but to God. And in the Bible reading that I'll read in just a few minutes, we focus on the one out of 10 who is healed and returns to Jesus to say that magic word. Thank you. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open, eyes facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, we have so much to thank you for. Our lives, our families, enough food to eat, good friends, a loving and caring congregation. The list could go on and on. Thank you, God. Amen. Your parents have a children's bulletin for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The first reading, 
God will lead you into a land of flowing streams. Times of abundance tempt us to forget God and rely on our own power and resources. But God is the one who took Israel out of Egypt, led and fed them in the wilderness, brought them into the land, and gave them power to be productive. To thank this God is to remember and proclaim God's deeds. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land flowing with streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that God has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, My power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, so that He may confirm His covenant that He swore to your ancestors, as He is doing today. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God.
the second reading, God provides every blessing in abundance. Christian fellowship involves sharing with those in need. Here, Paul is gathering a collection for the church in Jerusalem from all the Gentile churches he helped found. We can be extravagant in our giving because God is extravagant in providing for our lives. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your own mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The healed leper returns to give thanks to Jesus. A Samaritan leper becomes a model for thanksgiving. He does not take for granted the kindness shown to him, but takes time to thank Jesus and to glorify God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A gratitude not dependent upon circumstance. It was young Billy's birthday and he was opening his presents at Grandma and Grandpa's house. He was hoping for an Xbox and the package was just about the right size. But as, as he excitedly tore off the wrapping paper, he discovered only a pair of corduroy pants. Oh, they were nice pants as plant pants go, but Billy really wanted something else and he was young enough that he could not hide his disappointment. Every one of us here today has probably had a similar experience to Billy's. And so mom and dad coached us early in life to tell a little white lie and to say, thanks, it's just what I've always wanted. Well, at first, this voiced appreciation might not reflect our true feelings. But as we grow older, it becomes possible for us to truly appreciate every gift, if not because of the gift itself, then at least because of the thought and love behind the gift. For there are two reasons for thankfulness. The most obvious is because of the gift itself, 
You or I receive something we really like and we automatically feel thankful. The other reason for thankfulness is based not upon the gift itself, but upon the love and thoughtfulness behind the gift. This second reason for thankfulness is one that is not innate or automatic, but is learned. In preparing today's sermon, my first thought was to list some of the good things that we have received from God in the hope that such a catalog of gifts would help to make each of us more thankful. But as I thought about that approach, it occurred to me that if we already have many blessings from God, but aren't already thankful, listing God's gifts to us would probably make no difference. We are among the very richest people on the face of this planet, but no matter how long the list of God's gifts to us is, there's always room for one or two more blessings that we wish we had. A better job, a nicer house, good health, a newer car, a slightly bigger paycheck, higher grades in school. So you see, the problem with making a list of all the good things our God has given us is that it leads almost automatically to another list, a list of things we want, a list of things that our God has not given us. And as we compare the two lists, we could become more or less thankful depending on which list is longer. If our thankfulness to God is based solely upon what God has given us, as many as the blessings may be, we quickly become dissatisfied and even ungrateful. Yet fortunately, there is that other reason for thankfulness. Thankfulness which is born of an appreciation not simply for the gift given, but a thankfulness created by the love which caused the gift to be given. For example, it may well be impossible to give a gift of the perfect words when visiting at a funeral home. Yet the fact is that although some words may indeed be better than others, it's not actually the words that count. The real gift when visiting at a funeral home is simply that we cared enough to come. So even when we feel terribly awkward at such times, even when we're disappointed that our words were not more comforting or profound, we can be sure that when a bereaved family says thanks for coming, they mean it. For they can see and feel our love and our concern, even when there are no words to express our sympathy. It is the thought, not the words, that counts. In today's Gospel reading, 10 people with leprosy are healed by our Lord. And because of COVID-19, I think we can have a greater appreciation for lepers. Because upon diagnosis of their illness, they were consigned to quarantine. They had to stay away from family, friends, and loved ones. Thanks to COVID-19, we know about quarantine. In Numbers 5, the Lord commanded the Israelites to put out of the camp anyone who is leprous. Leviticus offers further counsel about how to safeguard the community. Leviticus directs that the person who has the leprous disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head be disheveled, and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Lepers were isolated and quarantined and feared. Here's a clip from The Chosen that gives an idea about the loneliness, seclusion, and estrangement of lepers and the fear that they generated. <laughs> It's a leper. Stay back. Cover your mouth. Don't breathe his air. Don't come any closer. It's okay, John. It's okay. Rabbi, 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 Rabbi you cannot. This disease, you can't. Please. 
please. Please don't turn away from me. I won't. In today's Gospel reading, ten people quarantined and shunned due to leprosy are healed by our Lord. No doubt given such a miraculous and life-enhancing gift, no doubt that every one of them was grateful for the healing. But one leper can see something behind the gift of healing. One leper can see that God is the giver of this gift. And so he is doubly blessed. Not only has he been healed from a terrible disease, which had cut him off from the rest of society, but he alone of the ten has recognized the love of God at work in Jesus Christ. This one leper now knows that God loves him and cares for him. All ten lepers receive the gift of healing, but only one is pronounced well. Rise and go on your way, says our Lord. Your faith has made you well. His faith has made him well, for by his faith, this man is able to see beyond the gift of healing to God's love. Faith adds a second blessing to God's gifts, gratefulness at the loving intent of the giver. Gratefulness that runs so deep it can be joyful and thankful even when the giver bears no gifts. Listen to the words of the prophet Habakkuk. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will exult in the God of my salvation. Here is a sense of gratitude and joy which does not rely on happy circumstances. Here is a sense of joy despite the failure of all those things which would normally be needed to make one feel good. Because the prophet Habakkuk knows God's continuing love and care, he is thankful no matter what the circumstances. It can be that way for you and for me, too. We can feel deep thankfulness, deep gratefulness, and even a deep joy no matter what life throws at us. We can be thankful because we know God's continuing love and care for us. A love and care that does not flinch or cease even at death. A love and a care which gives rise to peace, contentment, thankfulness, and joy that no one, no hardship, no threat, not even death, can take away from us. God has come to us in Jesus Christ, and so we know God's presence, God's love, and God's care, no matter what. God loves us, and God cares for us. That is reason enough to be thankful, when we have plenty, and even when we live in want. In spite of what they say, that your health is everything, we know a peace that is not dependent even on good health. Rise and go your way to serve with joy. Your faith, your relationship with God, has given you a wellness, a contentment, a gratitude that is not dependent upon physical health or possessions. Thanks be to God for a joy, a peace, and a thankfulness which cannot be taken away. Amen. During the Thirty Years' War in Germany, and at the beginning of the plague of 1637, Surrounded by death, disease, and hunger, Lutheran pastor Martin Rinkert composed a hymn, not a lament as could be expected during such difficult times, not a lament, but a hymn of praise and thanksgiving. 
And so as we consider a gratitude not dependent upon circumstance, we join together in singing the hymn of the day, Now Thank We All Our God. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you have accomplished through your people and we pray for your continued blessing in our ministry together. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Move us to assist the poor who are hurt by global climate change. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you order our lives by your providence. We give you thanks for laws, infrastructure, and leadership that structure and support our human endeavors. Align our purposes with your own, that all our undertakings might witness to your loving care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those most in need of your mercy, especially those whom we name before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversation with family and friends. In this time of thanksgiving, steer us from passive receiving to active response, from old quarrels to reconciliation, and from overconsumption to true gratitude. We ask that you make your loving presence known this holiday weekend, especially on those who celebrate alone. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have gone before us. By their example, enrich the generosity of our witness to others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you shall reign forever and ever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. receive the blessing. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.